everyone, I'm Melissa. Hi, I'm Michael. Today we're gonna talk to you about Dale City, which is part of Woodbridge, Virginia. You ready? Yes, okay. totally. All right, so Dale City was developed as a planned community by Cecil Don Hilton in the 1960s and 70s. So both Dale City and Lake Ridge, which is another area that's part of Woodbridge, were annexed into Woodbridge and are considered to be part of Woodbridge by all accounts. Uh, Dale City is also the largest area of Woodbridge, with, boasting a population of 72,000. Lake Ridge and then the rest of Woodbridge proper each have about like 40, 45,000 residents. Yeah. Location. All right. So as we discussed, there are three, like three p main parts essentially to uh, Woodbridge. You've got the CDP uh, census designated place, which is really east of 95. Dale City, which is what we're talking about in this video, is south of Lake Ridge and west of Woodbridge and 95. And then the eastern border is 95. The southern border is along Cardinal and Miniville roads. The northern border border is like Prince William uh, County Parkway. Fun fact, Michael, did you know how Dale City was named? Yes. Tell me. Yes, it was named for uh, C.D. Hilton, the developer, mm -hmm. and also for the hills and dales of the Virginia Piedmont. Over hill, over dale. Yeah. <laughs> so exciting. Another did you know, um, Dale City was actually built before everything to its east. So they actually have their own water service, which is Virginia American. They provide water and sewer service to Dale City. Yeah, it was very confusing when I first sold my first property in there because I was so used to the rest of Prince William County. Oh yeah. And all the yeah. water and then I was totally fine. Your own little water was an own water company. <laughs> own little water company. <laughs> oh quaint. All right, transportation? Yes. Yeah, let's talk about transportation. Okay. So uh, Woodbridge is huge. So we're going to break this down in each one of our videos. But, uh, you know, Dale City really is, uh, you know, can add, living in Dale City, parts of it, especially um, as you get further south, can really add about 20 to 25 minutes onto your ride. And so it really is something that you do have to consider when you're purchasing in Dale City. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about this with Lake Ridge as well. But it really is just important to consider all of that factor, you know, especially because that area of 95 also is a bottleneck. So totally. you're, you're going to be dealing with the bottleneck in the evenings um, and then bottleneck in the mornings. And then also you're going to have the commute time to the highway. So um, this is why, you know, we're really going to break down all the different types of transportation just because of the fact that uh, it does mitigate a lot of the commuting times if you do take public transportation or slugging, which we'll talk about. So um, there really seems to be a day free of congestion. Oh yeah, I was in, in the it Woodbridge today. Area. <laughs> so um, one of the cool things is that Dale City is close to the VRE, uh, the Woodbridge stop. So the Virginia Railway Express. So it's the commuter train, uh, really comfortable. I have had a lot of friends who have ridden it from that area, really like it. And uh, so you also have the, you have two stops, the Woodbridge off, stop off Route 1, and then you also have the Ripon Landing uh, VRE stop. Uh, the VRA terminates at Union Station, uh, and it has stops in Old Town, Alexandria, and Crystal City. It's a really cool option. It is. It's very convenient. Yeah. Yeah. I've had, like, well, we had clients down there, too, in Woodbridge, and they were like, we got to be near the VRE, so, because yeah. one was commuting one way to downtown, the other one was commuting south. She was yeah. going to Dumfries, so they went to two different directions. Or yeah. yeah. And a lot of companies may subsidize it, because it does count towards, you know, a lot of people do get, uh, do get money for commuting from their company, so it is something really to consider. Um, yeah. It's really nice, and they have packages depending on how much you used it, mm -hmm. and they've also tailored it now, which is nice for, uh, to, for the more work from home uh, hybrid style work and it goes south too right it goes to Fredericksburg or whatever yeah, yeah. you can go down yeah. south yeah yeah, yeah yeah there's further stops down um, you know you just have to remember uh, this is one trick that I learned from friends is you have to remember uh, that whichever stop you go to there may be more people so seat selection is gonna get uh, worse and worse the, lo the further up on the line you are oh so yeah yeah so um, and then also commuters have the option to take the Omnilink bus which uh, I've also had a lot of friends who have done that I had a friend who commuted on the Omnilink bus for about five years um, so uh, it's the the uh, Omnilink bus stop is over at near Gideon Road and Dale Boulevard. Um, it's a really cool stop. It's actually pretty convenient for everyone, even Lake Ridge, um, because you can cross some of the, the some of the crossroads uh, and get over there. It's really nice. And the drop off spots for uh, include downtown DC, Roslyn, the Pentagon, Old Town, and the Navy Yard. 
Oh, all right. So it goes all the way there. Yeah. And then there's slugging, which I've like never heard of until yeah. I moved here. <laughs> I would see people lined up in Roslyn. I'm like, what is that? The slug line. And I was with my friend. I'm like, why do you call them slugs? Yeah. A lot of friends ha have done it. It's uh, it's actually pretty cool. Um, and so it's just, it's the Horner Road parking lot is the one that's the most common um, and has a lot of people. And um, you just wait, depending on if you want to drive or you want to ride. Um, it just depends. And you pull up and there's this whole culture with it. And, um, you know, some people are quiet cars. Just all the, the whole culture is so fascinating to read about. Oh, it's yeah. definitely worth a read online. It's amazing. So I have a friend like 15 years ago. So the slug ride is basically, it's just a carpool. You get in the line and then there's certain places like around the area where if you're in this line, it's because you're going to this location. So slug car comes, it picks you up and it takes whatever, three people or whatever it is. It's like no radio. You're not allowed to ask for changes to the temperature sometime. So I had a friend and she was in the car and she... She said it was a non-talking car. You were not allowed to talk and she's allergic to bees and a freaking bee flew in through the vent in the car and she said she was like <laughs> <laughs> And the driver was like is something wrong? She's like I'm allergic to bees and he's like you could have said something yeah. She's like it's a quiet car. She didn't want to get kicked out of the slug line. I was like that is crazy it is, I mean, but there are all these different rules and you have to abide by them. Oh yeah, they boot you right out. Well, and also, I mean, my friends have told me that uh, if they see somebody that's a problem, <laughs> they will like pull past them, they, you know? They put it in your permanent pile. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know how there's a mental log of this, but um, I guess that it's probably the really big offenders. Uh, it absolutely picking that one up. Yeah, it would terrify me to ride with the, with the way people drive. Oh my God, so, oh my God. Um, and then also, if you are heading south east to Quantico, which we do have a lot of military clients mm -hmm. um, and then you know contractors and things like that that work on base yeah NCIS is there Marine yeah for yep FBI Academy yep and the Naval Criminal Investigative Service I know I said that NCIS oh you did yeah sorry ha uh -huh. no. <laughs> I'm ahead of you yeah <laughs> so and that's gonna be you're gonna be using route one more um, mm -hmm. going into that area so right. and you're gonna be doing a reverse commute which is really nice <laughs> I never really say that in DC because reverse commute is kind of like it's always scary because you just never know yeah you do never know I mean you really do so. you are definitely going away from the direction of most of where everybody else is going yeah you can also take a lot of back roads which is really nice yeah yeah which there are actually a lot of back roads in that area um, all right, well, we can do real estate next yeah. so let's talk real estate uh, so most neighborhoods in Dale City actually end in Dale <laughs> <laughs> and the streets along Dale Boulevard actually also end in Dale. Birchdale, Carydale, Darbydale, Trentdale. I mean, they really struggled hard to put Dale on the end of <laughs> words that don't need Dale. My Michael Dale, Melissa yes. Dale. <laughs> So there are very, very few condo communities in Dale City. The true one level style, like the flat condos or whatever, are basically in the 200,000s. There's only a couple communities. Um, there are townhome condos as well. Those are typically high 300,000s to the mid 400s. And then you've got single family detached homes that are in the 300s. Um, but the homes at that price point, I mean, they're gonna be small. They're gonna need a lot of work. Once you get closer to 400,000, you're gonna see that the homes are basically more updated. And you'll also start to see other other home styles like instead of just the rambler or the ranch house you'll see you know center hall colonials and split foyers and things like that so there's a ton more options in the four hundred thousand to five hundred thousand dollar price range making this a very very affordable suburb of dc if you need a larger home the prices actually rise steadily into the seven hundred thousands now townhomes start at the 300,000 mark and they go to the 600,000s. And so you may be wondering like, wait a minute, you just said that I could pretty much get a single family home for that same price. Why would anybody go with a townhome? Well, a couple reasons. The first is that the townhomes at this price point are basically all brand new, like brand new within the last couple years. And any townhome that is priced in the mid 500s was likely built in the last few years. Second, you're gonna get a lot of space in these houses. They're yeah. like, well into the 2000, you know, four level townhomes. Yeah. There's a lot, like you walk in, you might have a basement level and a garage, two car garage, and then you go up and you've got three full living levels that might be, you know, eight, 900 square foot each yeah. level. So get, you get close to 3000 square feet. 
All right, food, that's your department, sir. Yes, yeah, so, uh, you know, really to start off, we're gonna go over with grocery, go over grocery stores. So uh, you've got Lidl, Aldi, Giant, Food Lion, Safeway, all your kind of typical grocery stores. Um, and then you're also really not far away from Wegmans at uh, the Potomac Town Center. Uh, and what it, what's really nice is it actually, part of Dale City actually backs up to it. So um, it's really easy to access that. Uh, and then also you've got the Harris Teeter over on Spriggs Road. Uh, everything, like it's crazy because there's everything there, but you're also hearing that's like, it's almost like they're serving sort of all like, you know, socioeconomic demographics, right? Because yeah. like Food Lion only serves to like a specific, you know, like they're in our communities out in Delaware and stuff yeah. like that, right? And then in Wegmans is like the fancy hoity-toity people i don't know yeah i mean yeah it's just it's <laughs> people really, who cook yeah 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 I mean, there's just so many options the one in uh my first introduction to wegmans was the one in uh woodbridge oh so i was gonna say fairfax but yeah okay. yeah so um that one was like really truly like spending time in there i went into the one in fairfax maybe once or twice but like actually regularly shopping and it's really great it's super convenient plus also um my organic market ma also called mom's is there and uh, it's a wonderful local natural uh grocery store yeah um and it's a small chain in our area um and uh it's really great and then also you got walmart and target um and they have their grocery stores uh and then there are over international grocery stores as well, kind of pocketed in the different areas. Mm -hmm. Most of them are in the more commercial spaces um, uh, in the sense of like uh, kind of more warehouse style mm -hmm. over in Dale City on the border, but they're really close and really great. And so um, one of my favorites uh, uh, farmer's markets in the area is Dale City. I love the Dale City Farmer's Market. And it's continued to grow over the years, which is really cool. And they mm -hmm. really have tried to control uh, who's actually selling there. And so they try to make it as local as possible, which is really cool. Um, and uh, it's it's uh, located in the Dale City commuter lot uh, near Dale Boulevard and Gemini Way. Um, super convenient. It's uh, seasonal and it's open on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Oh. Uh, really great. And one of the, the favorite... Um, farms that that does meat and eggs is there and they have so many different options so if you really like to cook you can really get cuts that you could think you could only get at the grocery store you can actually get them there which is really cool cool um so and uh, family owned restaurants so i have frequented a lot of the deal city small chains <laughs> small family owned restaurants uh and there are a lot of staples that have been in the area which is really cool i really like that the the patronage has been there for so many of the restaurants so um you know one of my favorite places is kiki riki it's an awesome peruvian chicken restaurant and the name is hysterical yeah it sounds it. fun it's so great i love it so um zafran is also a delicious halal restaurant um which is over near dale boulevard in miniville really fantastic restaurant um, Golden House is awesome for Chinese food. It's been around forever. Uh, their steamed dumplings are some of the best I've ever tasted in the area. It's okay. one of those gems. So, and then talking about gems, Padrino's Pizza. It's been around forever since my friends were in elementary school. Ooh, uh, and they went there for days. pizza parties. <laughs> so uh, Back when we walked five miles to school uphill both ways. Yes, and snowing <laughs> in a foot. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and it's, uh, it's one of those really great old school pizza joints that you can go in on a Friday night. It's great for beer and pizza. And the pizza comes out. It's just, it's all, it looks, it reminds me a lot of the old Pizza Huts. Just kind of that old oh. uh, familiar vibe that you yeah. walk in and it's like, oh, you know you're at a pizza place. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then also if you're in the mood for seafood, uh, Dale City Seafood is awesome. Ordered from there so many times. They have so many amazing options for seafood. It's really great. What a basic name for a restaurant. Dale City Seafood. You know exactly where it is and what you're getting. Exactly. Yeah, and it's <laughs> been around. You never miss it. <laughs> um, and then Dale City has a lot of the chain restaurants that we know and love. Um, but I really do encourage everybody to go and check out the locally owned restaurants. Restaurants. There are more popping up day by day. Um, you know, give them some love. You definitely won't disapp be disappointed. And uh, the thing about Dale City is that it's so close to Woodbridge and Lake Ridge. You have so many options that you're never going to want for anything. You can get anything that you want, any type of uh, cuisine. It's so cool. So it's and there's also a lot of really good breweries as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, not to be outdone with your food section, let's talk a little bit about family and fun stuff that's here. So you've got a couple rec centers here in Dale City. You've got Chin Aquatics and Fitness, which is over in Woodbridge, and then the Dale City Recreation Center. Do you know where that is? Yep. Where? 
It's right over off of Dale Boulevard. No, it with Dale City is the answer because it's the Dale oh. City. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! All right. So for a very like low cost membership, there you can take advantage of like their sports and fitness classes, swimming, and, and all that good stuff. Fun tip, but I also used to take spinning classes when I was younger there. Ooh, yeah, it was fun. Did you wear the spinning outfit? Sure did. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Not anymore, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I took spinning. I had to buy my own, like, seat cover because my butt, like, hurt from those stupid little seats. I'm yeah. like, who sits on these things? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. There's the Prince William um, Ice Center, which is an indoor rink, and that is on Dale Boulevard. There's also Waterworks Water Park, which is one of the biggest in Northern Virginia. Yes. Uh, then there's Fridays at 5, which is a concert series that runs every Friday from May through August at the Prince William County Complex. Uh, and then in Dale City, you've also got the Birchdale Community Center, which has a pool. They've got a playground, basketball court, and a park. There's also a recreation center with group fitness classes, a newly renovated gym, sports classes, and uh, sports leagues for kids uh, as young as two, and a dance program that starts at two years old. There's also a Pilates studio, which actually has the reformers, because usually they just call it Pilates, and then you're on a mat, which I think is the original Pilates, but still, the reformers, like, way better. And the pool is a 24-meter indoor pool. Yep. Yeah. And then for schools, so elementary schools are sort of like middle of the range here. You're going to see a lot of fives and sixes. Uh, don't forget, though, like we've got a decent population here where English may not be their first language. And so this greatly impacts test scores. It's almost as if the tests are like stacked, like the odds are just stacked against people where they aren't able to... To re I mean, like I said, like I had a practice of one of these things and I read it and I'm like, I could read this question two ways and I'm 50 years old, like, and yeah. I couldn't figure it out, right? Yeah. So anyway, middle schools are also middle of the road. Um, the high school in Dale City, do you know who that was named for? Hilton. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Poor CD though. His namesake school is a three on the great school score. Yeah. But again, these scores are like really subjective. Um, and so you just have to kind of take a look at like everything, you know, from the websites that they provide, the demographics, the sports, the academics and all of that and kind of see if that's like, you know, up your alley, if that's going to work or not. Yeah. And three of my best friends graduated from Hilton. Ooh. <laughs> and are they like famous and rich right now? No, but they're successful. Oh, CD. I'm sorry. I was hoping I was going to get some alumni from your school. Yeah. So anyway, nobody famous. No. Uh, all right. Well, that was Dale City. So it's a very affordable suburb compared to the rest of Metro D.C. Well, commuting may be difficult depending where in Dale City you live and in which direction you're going. Your real estate dollar actually goes a lot farther here, which is really, really exciting than when you compare it to other parts of the metro area. There's also, um, Dale City offers proximity to a lot of outdoor and recreation activities and everything that living closer to the Potomac and closer to bodies of water will give you access to, as well as employment centers like Quantico and Fredericksburg, as well as D.C. Yeah, and if you're working from home, it's even better. There you go. Yeah. All right. We are checking out of here.